We say that a picture is worth a thousand words. The reason for this is that painting and other forms of plastic arts, like the statuary or the sculpture, they represent the whole thing the way that nature presents the whole thing. Ages ago, they used to say, well, why are there all these beautiful images in Catholic churches? And they would say, well, those are the days when most people couldn't read, and so they needed to look at pictures in church to understand what was in the Bible. But in point of fact, none of us have the time. And all of us need to see the pictures because we need to have the whole picture. And now we have the Bible so we can read it. You can read the Bible now. They want you to put a graven image in your mind. Have pictures and images in your mind. Study the sacred art with a priest. We're supposed to study and show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We're to study the word. When you put images in your mind, um, I believe it's not going to transform your mind into the image of Christ by picturing a Last Supper photo or a picture of Rome's long-haired Jesus having these images stored up in our heart, these graven images that people stare at and bow down before. We say that a picture... And venerate and adore and genuflect, and it's, it's worshiping it, um, an image. When you look upon the Word... The Holy Spirit transforms you, transforms your mind, um, a, di a divine influence upon the heart uh, through grace by believing the word upon hearing the word. <laughs> so, lo so looking at a picture is not going to transform you at all. Um, it's going to keep you in your carnal, natural mind. In fact, it's going to keep you as the image of the beast, which are the things that um, the deeds of the flesh and the thoughts that need to be taken into captivity into the obedience of Christ. And um, the deeds of the flesh that we crucify by the power of the Holy Spirit. And, sure is worth a thousand words. and looking upon an image is going to keep you um, carnal. It's going to keep you carnal into the image of the beast. So sitting there all day and picturing a Mary statue or a Jesus photo from, from Rome, you know, that's not going to transform you. Um, you need the word. We're supposed to study the word, not study art. Um, graven by art, Don't, not, not to think that the Godhead is like unto images graven by art and man's device. Um, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. So that cannot transform your mind. Um, looking upon graven images um, and mentally, we're supposed to bind the word between the frontlets of our eyes. The word, not art. Um, we're supposed to walk by faith and not by sight, you know. Um, but we're, we're supposed to bind the word between the frontlets of our eyes. Um, meditate on the word, not meditate on art. Uh, art can art cannot transform you. Um, but let's see what he says here. Um, we're supposed to be transformed into the image of Christ. Be not conformed to this world, um, but be, tra be, tra be transformed by the renewing of your mind to prove what is that perfect and acceptable and perfect will of God and the way to prove um, what is that perfect and acceptable will of God is by studying the word to show yourself approved. Um, and now we now we have published Bibles in English and in whatever your language is, and we can um, read the word and let the Holy Spirit um, sow the good seed, the word of God, to your spirit and bring all things into your remembrance whatsoever um, Jesus has said unto us, because the scriptures testify of Jesus. So... Uh, Doing this will keep you in the image of the beast. Um, being the wrong seal, he says to put your mind on an image. Well, that's the wrong. That's that's the wrong mark. That's the wrong mark. An image. Uh, we're being transformed into the image of Christ by looking upon the Word, having God's words in our mind. So having the image, the image of the beast, um, graven images stored up in our heart and in our mind. There's no power in that to transform. We say that a picture is worth a thousand words. The reason for this is that painting and other forms of plastic arts, like the statuary or the sculpture, they represent the whole thing the way that nature presents the whole thing. Ages ago, they used to say, well, why are there all these beautiful images in Catholic churches? And they would say, well, those are the days when most people couldn't read, and so they needed to look at pictures in church to understand what was in the Bible. But in point of fact, none of us have the time, and all of us need to see the pictures because... They just say none of us have the time. None of us have the time. <laughs> none, none of us have the time to seek the Lord while he may be found. So just stare at some art all day 
and um, that's supposed to transform you into the image of Christ. Um, that actually keeps you, and that's the image of the beast. Um, that's the image of the beast. The description of the Ancient of Days that did sit on the throne in the book of Daniel. In Daniel, he had white hair like wool, um, as white as snow. And the description of Jesus in the book of Revelation, same description, white hair as snow. And John said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, a lamb. White hair, pure wool, pure wool hair. Um, we're not supposed to make any kind of images and look upon images. And none of us have the time to read the Bible. Well, you know, this this is not speaking for God. Um <laughs> those are where he'd say, get thee behind me, Satan, for you um, savor the things that be of men, not of God. Let's have the time, and all of us need to see the pictures, because we need to have the whole picture in our minds all the time, because what we need is the motivation to persevere in our love for God. So they're encouraging you to not only bow before statues and look upon graven images and sticks and stones and walk by sight and continue being spiritually dead and blind, but they're continuing, they're, they're encouraging you not to sow the word to your spirit, but to meditate on an image you saw with your eyes, you know, because seeing is believing, right? That's what the world says. But we walk by faith and not by sight. Blessed are those who have not seen in belief. Um, there's no power in um, the earth. The elements are not holy. Um, looking upon sticks and stones and images, uh, yeah, this is going to keep um, people in the image, the image of the beast, the brute beast, that carnal nature that's rebellion against God. So picture is worth a thousand words. It's also worth a thousand hours of study based on. So a picture, an image, a graven image to look upon it. It's worth um, thousands of hours of study. So study, study the image, you know, made by man's hands. And store that up in your heart. Put that between the frontlets of your eyes. Get that in your mind. And um, it's not going to transform you. Um, you're going to remain spiritually dead. Uh, <laughs> you need the power of, of the Holy Spirit, the Word. Um, do what God says. Study the scriptures. Don't do this. Don't do this. Okay. You have to learn to look. No, no, no. You don't have to learn to look. See, these are Pharisee, Holy See. See, he's got his glasses on, Pharisee. He's sight walkers. They, they walk by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. Um, what did he say? We need to look upon it. Study. Based on one thing, you have to learn to look. You have to learn now to use your eyes. You need to learn to look. Seeing is believing. We walk by faith and not by sight. We don't need to learn to look. We need to learn to look within and learn what the scriptures say and sow that to the spirit. Get that word in our mind to transform us and renew us. And give us a new heart, which is a new mind, a new character, new attributes. Um, and the Lord will cause us um, to walk in his ways, keep his statutes and judgments and do them. Because a new heart will influence us to bend our heart towards God and be humble. And will um, speak upright in our conversation is in heaven. Um, it's not by observation. The kingdom of God is not by observation. Um, you know, learning to look. Looking upon sticks and stones. And a hierarchy, an organized religion, a, a house made with man's hands, not of this building. Know you not that um, your your body is a temple of God and the Holy Spirit dwells within you? Um, God doesn't dwell in houses made with man's hands. It's not brick and mortar. We don't need to look to observe. Jesus said his kingdom's not of the world. Um, it's not by observation. It's not by looking upon the elements of the earth and calling it holy. None of it is. This is all this is all contrary to the word of God and its deception coming soon. Yes, um more strong delusion coming soon. So we need to learn the look, he says. This is a this is a Pharisee right here. We say that a picture is worth a thousand words. The reason for this is that painting and other forms of plastic arts like the statuary or the sculpture. Yeah, fake, phony, plastic, not real. Um, yeah, don't study sacred art. Uh, come out of this and study the word. Like God says, you know, don't study. He doesn't say to study art. You know, study to show yourself approved unto God. Study the word. Rightly dividing. See, look at a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. We're not ashamed of the gospel. Rightly dividing the word of truth. The word. The word, not art. 
And we don't want to store up these images in our mind. We'll be storing up wrath for as much as we are the offspring of God. See, in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead. So it's the word. Jesus is, Jesus is the word. He's not an image. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think, not to think, that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art. Study art. Well, look what God says. Graven by art and man's device. Now here's an example. This is how you overcome the adversary. When he speaks something like that, if you know God's word, you're going to know it is written. And Jesus beat the devil in the wilderness with it is written, it is written, it is written. So we need to do, to do the same thing. We need to know his mind. We need to know God's will. We need to know his word. We need to know him. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher higher than the heavens and higher than our ways. So if you know his word, what his word says, not going to be deceived and um, be um, the blind leading the blind, the blind guides, the blind Pharisees. Um, we were all like sheep who've, got, who've gone astray, and now we need to return unto the shepherd and the bishop of our soul, which is Jesus. Uh, so if you know what this word says right here, see? If you know what this word says right here, well, then when you hear him say we need to look upon graven by art, store up that in our mind, store up that, store up idols in our heart. This, there's no power in the elements to transform you. There's no power in it. It's carnal. It's dead works. It's not going to transform your mind. There's no power in it. God doesn't say to do it. He says the opposite. So if you know the word, you can see what's written. And this is what's written. And that's how you beat the devil. That's how you beat the adversary and you shut him up. You cast down that thought that was exalting itself above the knowledge of God. And you bring it into the captivity in the obedience of Christ because God gives the Holy Spirit to them that obey him. So you need to obey his word. It's all about the mind, what you believe. It's all about purging out that old leaven, the doctrine of the Pharisees, you know. Um, and we don't walk by we don't we don't walk by sight looking upon things and the kingdom of God is not by observation. So last one right here. Last one right here for for we walk by faith. By faith not by sight and he said we need he said we need to learn to look but jesus says not by sight so who are you going to believe let god be true and every man a liar that you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men well um god bless you in jesus